Lynn Cullen live in one minute. Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. Hello and welcome to a beautiful, sunny, snowy, beautiful, snow on the leaves kind of a day in Pittsburgh. It's all melting. Um, and uh, winter definitely is here. Everybody's making a big deal about it. It's what, uh, 10, 11? No, it's 11, 12, 13 today. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> So, Susan, actually, Susan's in St. Louis, and Susan, uh, there, it's, um, right now, it's, oh, no, in t- five minutes or so, it'll be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. No, we're already there. We're, we're at 9, 1. No, 9, 10. Oh, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay. <laughs> And that's never going to happen again in your lifetime. So I want you, in a minute, to be very aware of 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, never before in your life and uh, nor since. That'll be it. One moment, savor it. It already happened to us, and I missed it. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So, how you doing? I'm doing fine, and you? I'm uh, okay, I think. I think. Um... So, oh, so, I'm trying to think of what it is we want to talk about today. Yeah, what is it? Do you see Rupert Murdoch has a new babe? No. <laughs> <laughs> I saved that piece of information just for you because I know how much you would appreciate it. Uh, Rupert Murdoch, who I believe is still involved in extricating himself from his uh, former marriage to that uh, Wendy Deng. Right? But she was his, such his fierce protector. Guess what? That's exactly the point. I wanna, I wanna get to listen to this. She was Tiger Wife. Yes, yes, yes. Listen to what it says right here. It was Deng's telling moment in the sun, stepping between Murdoch and a pie wielder when he was called two years ago to testify about hacking before Parliament. Now listen, he has told his friends, it says, that that moment crystallized his anger at her. Are you trying to figure that out? Um, it, well, maybe he experienced it as being emasculating and exactly, overbearing. Exactly right. He was furious. He realized he did but not... She made him look like an incapable old man. Right. He realized he did not want her protecting him, making him look old and weak. So that moment where we all said, oh... What love of this young woman for this wrinkled old jerk. Oh, how wondrous. He was seething at being protected publicly by her. Isn't that a piece of work? Well, you know, when (laughs) old men marry young women, it's not to make themselves look old and unpowerful. Correct. Correct. But I, it, it, he's, she's there to make him appear more vibrant and young, and not more, uh, you know, diminished. 
pretty amazing though because I don't I never heard anybody at the time su- suggest that he might not have liked it. Um, we were all extolling her uh, her courage and her uh, her quick reflexes, I believe. Anyway, she's no she's no treasure. Oh no! Well, who thought she would be? Yeah. So she's thirty nine. He is how old? He's um, uh, eighty two. Four hundred and twenty six. No, and I a- thought at the time they you know they looked like they you know deserved each other. Yeah. Well, he's eighty two. She's thirty nine, and they're in a probably pretty ugly ugly struggle um, about money right now. But um, you don't think that she that there was a prenup there? I don't know. I suppose there would be. I don't know, but I don't think that I don't think they're totally divorced. Um, so it shouldn't surprise you, Susan, that the wrinkled old weak eighty two year old gazillionaire has found a new woman. No. Well, how old is this one? Twenty six? Well, you know, they don't quite say, but let us imagine that yes, I would believe she'd be in her twenties, but it it says he has a new romantic interest, a younger woman. Not an old 39-year-old. A younger woman who has been traveling with him. In fact, it's his massage therapist. Oh, sure, because he, you know, that makes perfect sense because he doesn't have to worry about getting naked in front of her. She's already seen it all. <laughs> he has told his friends that she has made him very happy. Oh, I'm going to throw up. All right. Well, and also, here's just another little piece of information. So, you know, this is the, the love lives of the, of the rich and wrinkled. Um, turns out that, you know, that marriage was on the rocks anyway. They were barely speaking to each other anyway. His children, adult children, couldn't stand her. Um, and there was never any any ability to get those two together, and he is very devoted to his children. Um, and they pretty much lived apart, and she was carrying on. She was cuckolding him with none other than Google's executive chairman, Eric Schmidt. Uh. You know, I'm. I guess. I guess I'm getting really old. Susan, come on. Well, I just find all of this disgusting. Naughty. <laughs> <laughs> well, all these rich people are screwing around and hopping from bed to bed, and and I don't know. And listen to this. Oh, there's one because other... because because we have created a new group of people who are that are. So wealthy, and and that can just do whatever they want and play by their own rules, and are, and you know, and then they and they kick out the people that no longer please them, and they pull other people up to play with for a while, and then they drop kick them out of there too. It's all disgusting. Yes, of course it is. But a lot of other people would like to be in their position. Really? Yeah. Oh, sh- are you kidding me? Well, you want to be Rupert Murdoch, or you want to be the the, the little uh, the uh, quote masseuse unquote. Oh, they want to be Rupert Murdoch. Well, duh. Yeah, I'm not saying they want to be the masseuse, although that could be a okay ride for a while, I guess. <laughs> oh, and listen to this. Do you think he forgives and forgets? Oh no! Turns out that he. Um, inadvertently Murdoch tweets he inadvertently what he thought was a private message I guess to the New York Post he instead put it out to the general public and the tweet said something like this please expose Eric Schmidt Google etc just wait Oh yeah, the fact that he doesn't want her anymore doesn't mean that he he, he won't he destroy. Yeah, and doesn't want her to have any more pleasure in his life when he's done with her. So, her life should be over. Yeah, well, he ain't done because he wants he wants to destroy the Google chair. <laughs> well, you know what? Guess how much I care. 
I know. May the best man win. Yeah, may they all lose. You know, I have to tell you, I mean, I, this is... It, Obviously, this is the kind of stuff, this is the kind of crap that, you know, we, we go to an opera and you watch these kinds of, you know. Yeah, but, you know, I got to tell you, not once have I gone to opera for the story. No, the stories are pretty ridiculous, aren't they? That's right. Well. But we are creating a whole generation of people with just, you know, the expression, fuck you, money. Well, Susan. And that's how they're living their lives. I got and, you, and we all seem to think it's just wonderful. And the only thing wrong is that it's so hard to be one of the people that get to have the money. But, you know, big deal. It's, we're, we're just so happy for them. Listen, um, actually, it's one of the subjects I wanted to bring up today because uh, Frank Bruni, who I normally think uh, doesn't do a very good job of being a columnist, uh, Frank Bruni's got, uh, I, well, a piece that I like. I like what he's talking about. Um, in the New York Times today called the Extra Legroom Society. And he talks about how um, America increasingly um, has, is, is so class-oriented now that there are, it, in almost any situation, any venue, where it used to be everybody sort of had the same experience, like, remember, the good old days at the ballpark, everybody had the same experience. Well, you know, that's gone. The rich sit in their little, you know, Aries above, above everybody else and are waited on by, uh, you know, by white-coated uh, waiters and, and, and don't get in the sun or don't get cold. And he points out how on airplanes increasingly um, the same kind of thing holds out. Those that can... The only people who clearly don't have any money are the people sitting back in steerage with not even two more inches of leg room. And, and every, who are getting their roll-ons taken away from them. And now are getting their roll-ons taken away. <laughs> and, and everybody else, as you go up the belly of the plane, you know, you, you go from... And it's exactly like when you used to think about, you know, uh, the, the trains in uh, 19th century uh, Europe. Uh, you know, what class, uh, uh, what compartment are you in? And, and this in America is really repulsive. He talks about the fact that when you go to an amusement park now, you can either have the experience that everybody's been having at amusement parks since amusement parks have existed, or you can have a special experience if you have enough money. And that, of course, means you don't have to stand in line. I guess at SeaWorld, there are six flags. There's even a special pass, Susan, that you can pay, obviously top dollar. I think this is the platinum experience at sea, at, uh, at Six Flags. And that means that if you, you don't wait in line and then you get on a ride, and if you really like that ride... You can just stay on. Correct. While some poor soul who's waited in line for two hours watches you go and around for the fourth money time. to come there, which, by the way, should be exactly the customer that Six Flags wants, because that's their bread and butter. You know, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. But, you know, I mean, there, there were always these ideas. I, you know, I remember one of the first times that, that, that Eric and I... You know, took a, a a real vacation and 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 went to uh, London and Paris, and we were told at the time you should buy a museum pass because the museum pass allows you to go past all the lines and get into the Louvre and get in, which it turns out was a wonderful thing to do. But that was you know uh, that was uh, thirty no, that that was twenty five years ago. Yeah. So it's just sort of evolved. Well, it's got... I'll tell you, the part that makes me angry is that I, I work hard for my extra leg room in that airplane. I got to fly 30, 30 legs on, on 400-year-old regional jets and hope that I survive in order to get my... In order to earn my right to One get upgrade, those yeah. seats. Yeah. Well, and everybody else has companies buying them for them and... Well, what he says, and it's so true, uh, you know, and in fact, it's not like uh, these kind of, you know, signs of affluence and status are anything new. 
um, you know, the car we drive, the clothes we wear, the home we live in, the neighborhood we live in, the clubs we belong to, have all been ways for people to advertise um, how wealthy they are. But he says, and this is so true, because who can't help but notice it, but lately the places and ways in which Americans are economically segregated and stratified have multiplied with little microclimates of exclusivity popping up everywhere. So that the plane, the airplane mirrors, mirrors the sports arena, the theater, the gym, um, everywhere there are tiers of service. He says even in Obamacare, <laughs> there's everywhere you go, there's bronze. What is where the level? Bronze, gold, and platinum or something? Mm -hmm. um, silver. There's a silver, bronze, silver, silver, gold. Bronze, silver, gold. And... Um, you know, and this is, I remember somebody once decrying this as a, as a way for America to lose its, what made it different special. and special. And if, you know, the rich living in enclaves behind uh, gated walls, uh, you know, with signs. Um, the first time I saw a sign like this, Susan, I was visiting our, our parents in um, in when they were lived in Palm Springs, um, and and the first time I saw one of these, and I've seen a million since, I was just shocked. My <gasps> when I saw a sign outside somebody's little you know condo, and it said protected. I think it was protected by armed response. Right. And I thought, what the hell? This is behind the iron gate that you had to go through with a person, you know, standing there and not letting cars through with, you know, with the, with the with spikes that come out of the ground uh, to, to puncture the tires of anyone who tries to run it into the enclave of the rich. I, and it's worse now. It is absolutely worse. They segregate themselves. It, it's they segregate themselves. They segregate their children. Their children have a totally different experience of life, and in it they do not mix with, <laughs> well, the great unwashed. Um, and you think this doesn't affect and infect the way people not only think about themselves and the world, but think about themselves in relation to the world and the rest of the human race it's just it, it's it's so absolutely against everything that i think of as what america promises i don't know why do people want it this is an, this is the same impulse too that keeps not necessarily rich people uh from sending their children to public schools where they homeschool them this sense that you have to somehow segregate yourself. That there's something dangerous out there with the great mix of humanity. If you just venture out without protection of some kind. I don't know. I, it just, it dri this drives me insane. It drives me insane. So, I don't know. I get annoyed by um, by those. Now they got different lines at the, um, you know, the TSA when you get on an airplane. Yeah. Are you? That's where it starts. Going to an airport and getting on a plane is a definite exercise in whether you're important or not. It starts with what line you get in at the at security, and then when you get to your gate, what boarding group you're in. And that will determine whether or not you will be able to travel with your carry-on or it will be confiscated at the door and you will miss your connecting flight because it will now be checked through. And, and, and you know, that's not random how they decide who's in group one, two, three, four, or five. It has to do with how much money you spent for the ticket. And also if you have any, um, if you belong to any, you know, one of their 
premium-y things. Do you believe the number of special things that they say, and now we will be boarding, you know, it used to be, you know, the infirm and people with children, if you need a little extra oh, yeah, time. They don't, now, you know... You have to really beg to get pre-boarded for any of those reasons. Right. So then they start with our first class passing. No, no, I think they give military. Military. Uh, ser- military serving now you can get on. Then they go to first class. Oh, they never calls it that. It's like our premium gold extra special people. May board no, now. they say first class, and then they say also executive platinum, platinum, and blah, blah, blah. But there are like seven or eight or 500 different little, and then the next one, it's, and now for our, yes. <laughs> I'm thinking, what is this? Me? I just went on the internet. I bought a ticket. It's why I'm always in boarding group six. Yeah. And, and I lose my luggage. And But no, or you can pay an extra, you know, $15 to uh, get a premium seat. No, I did. I did. Last time I traveled, I, I, I did 15 bucks to move up three seats and have three inches or two inches more for my uh, rather long legs. But you know what? It didn't change my group, which I was really pissed about because I thought it would get me for sure into a better group. Into a better group! That's it's all of what it is. Jeez. Yeah, well, he says at the, uh, 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 Bruni says that if you go to Six Flags, what you really want is what's called the Flash Pass. So with that, and then there's different kinds of Flash Passes, different versions. And the highest ver- version is when you get to stay on the ride if you're liking it. It's, you know something? Ugh. Here's what I'm the happiest about. I don't want to go to Six Flags. Yeah, right. <laughs> thank, God. thank God. And I don't, don't want to go to Disneyland either. Well, because you've been there, done that, and who needs been to? Been there, done that. And thank Never, God and I honestly, don't have to. didn't particularly enjoy the whole thing. Found it vaguely, or really not so vaguely, creepy. Mm-hmm. I'm like that, too. I don't like them either. I don't like large mascots running around, you know, or... No white coming up and going, and, you know, and guess what? Either did my children. Yeah, I don't think my kid ever particularly. We went twice to Disneyland, and I mean, you know, after what? Kids don't want to stand in line for an hour and a half. Oh, if I only knew I could have bought him, bought him to the head of the line. Um, no. What it's, kind of a mother are you? I don't know. And, you know, and I don't like those places because I, I don't like the rides. I can't do it. Yeah, anything. I don't want to. I mean, the whole idea of going there is to ride get rides. me on a ride that I know for sure is going to make me want to throw up. So yeah, who wants to where go? I really will throw up. Yeah. Or if I don't throw up, I certainly will be. You will have wished that you could because maybe you would have felt better. <laughs> yeah, so you'll be nauseated the rest of the time you're standing in line for the next god-awful ride. <laughs> I'm with you, but then... We're killjoys. We are. You I know. know. Well, it's our nature, so don't listen to us. But that's Everybody. okay. I mean, you know, all it. I'm just a fast learner. I think I remember projectile vomiting on one of those things where you stand up and spin when I was like seven, and I thought at the time, well, okay, I'm this not, isn't fun. No. No. My last ride was one when I was badgered into it by my son at Kennywood, which is the 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 wonderful old park here and um he says mom that is such a like babies go on that ride you can go on it with me it didn't look good to me because it went around and sort of swung you know right but i told him i said all right i was thinking i was a bad mother you don't go right you don't get on the you just stick your kid on the ride and wave at him time to do it with him so i got on and oh my god first of all I was terrified. I was terrified because the physical feeling is you're going to be thrown out of your seat. Of course. That, that's, and, I'm thinking, and it what? doesn't help when you read news reports of people that actually, actually have, have. <laughs> And I'm thinking, why do people like this? This feeling that they're about to die. And then, and then around and around. And by that, I screamed the entire way. I mean, it was like if somebody possibly could have seen me it would I mean I humiliated myself because I was terrified and um, of course it delighted my son and increased his pleasure in the ride immeasurably 
But I was sick the rest of that. I got off, and I and I, I don't know how I didn't throw up. Okay, not that anyone wanted to hear that. All right, so one, let's change it, change it. Now the subject, we move to paleontology, ladies and gentlemen. That's not about Sarah, and Sarah Palin, is it? No. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, paleontology. I know, I know, I know. Paley- I was just making a joke. I I'm know, sorry. that is okay. I love this one. Get this. The oldest known fossil of two insects copulating was found in a collection in Beijing. The exclusively, no, exquisitely. (laughs) It seems a funny word. I mean, to apply to two insects screwing. Copulating? Yes. The exquisitely detailed preservation features... Two frog hoppers caught in the act 165 million years ago. And that makes this little copulation 30 million years older than the previous record holding copulators. But don't which, you wonder what befell them? That yes, in the that middle they, of that yeah. act, they were perfectly preserved? Well, that's what it says. Well, anyway, the, the, they unseated a pair of flies from Lebanon who ha, were lovingly preserved in amber uh, doing it. And, yeah, they say uh, it's exceedingly rare to find uh, copulating insects uh, from uh, 165 million years ago <laughs> because... That I mean, how does that happen exactly right, because, as you said? Because if they're if they're in some sort of extreme thing, that wouldn't be the moment that they would be copulating. Right. So something happened that just poof, they they die instantly in mid you know mid act and preserved for uh, you know forever. Um, the, as far as is known, I'd drop the molten rock on them. I don't know. There are only 33 examples of copulating insects known to exist in the How many examples of copulating uh, human fossils do we have? Well, as far as I know, none, unless there's one maybe in, you'd think, in um, uh, where Vesuvius did its thing. Maybe. Does anybody know? Is there any fossilized... Uh, copulating humans. It's a good question, Susan. Susan wants to know. Yeah. I mean, forget the frog hoppers and the Lebanese in, uh, flies. Are there any humans who were caught in the act? Right. For, I mean, I've been watching uh, Masters t- of Sex, so I'm, I'm into, you know, softcore porn. Oh, God. All right. I have to take a break. We are taking a break. Are you attempting to find that? Are there any yeah, fossilized, looking. copulating humans? I'm looking. Jess is looking. <laughs> well, what good. would we do without the Internet, I ask you? Uh, we'll be right back. Another poser. Uh-huh. Away with Lynn Cullen Live. Go to the all-new Bergbargains.com for the best deals on gift cards from your favorite local restaurants, bars, museums, attractions, and shows. Log on now for half-off admission to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Monticello's, and City Theater tickets. The all-new BergBargains.com, Pittsburgh's best bargains, BergBargains.com. Download the CP Haps app to find out what's happening in Pittsburgh. It's the fun and free app that puts the most popular events at your fingertips. Text EVENTS to 77948 to download now. Available on the App Store and Google Play. Brought to you by Pittsburgh City Paper. You're listening to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Once again, here's Lynn Cullen. Things are not looking good for uh, fossilized copulating uh, humans. Okay. It doesn't look like it. Just thought I'd ask. I mean, yeah, they're well, so much bigger, it seems they'd be easier to find. <laughs> uh, Ray, we're scaring Ray, Susan. <laughs> he says, you two have been expounding on your displeasure... <laughs> with a spectrum from the filthy, evil rich to the innocent joys of amusement parks. I would not want to be on your bad side. I, I, I take that as a, I, I, think, um, I think he's telling us that we're coming across like uh, serious bitches is what yeah, it amounts to. Yeah, two grumpy old women. Well, I, I, now, come on, Ray. Isn't, isn't looking for fossilized uh, 
humans copulating yeah. a, a step up? Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? Huh? <laughs> uh, just says we have a caller. Hello? Uh, hello. This is Clarence. Oh, Mr. Clarence! I'm, I'm trying to figure out why you're asking about fossilized copulating humans, and the first thing you talked about was Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Touché. Yes. Way to pull I it let the all together. The paleontology joke outdo me. No, no, no. My bad. <laughs> that's good. That's all I got. All right. That's cool all right. enough. All right, that's thanks. more than good enough. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Although I must say, only one of them was fossilized, and my question involved two. Yeah, but still. Good. I, it's always good to try to see a common thread in our meanderings. Well, you know, we are just doing stream of consciousness, so that must have been the thread. Yeah. Uh, Marge writes, did you see... I'm sorry, Marge, you don't talk that way. Of course, I don't know how you talk, but did you see Rachel Maddow last night? Nope. She was discussing Governor Brown. Oh, no, that, Governor wait, Brown. Not Brown. You're talking about the Wisconsin governor. What's his name? Matt Walker. Walker. Who's his, and and that's what she memoir. says. Right. And his crazy laws he is trying to pass regarding women's birth control. This is Scott Walker, you mean. Right. Uh, I know why she said Brown. She's thinking of Scott Brown, the senator, the ex senator. And this is. Scott Walker, the Got unfortunately it. not ex governor. Yeah. And who's constantly being discussed as a Republican pre moderate Republican president. Well, you know, and did you saw the part where he rewrote uh, what happened on the Koch, uh, the, the Koch brothers uh, interview that with the journalist. He's pretending, he's saying that it was God's way of speaking to him. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. All right, well, what? whatever. So what she says is, whoops, lost it. My kids were not being quiet, so I didn't hear all of it. But what I did hear was that some women will be forced to discuss their birth control plans with their bosses. How crazy is that? And does Susan know about this? And why are men never mentioned regarding birth control? We don't get pregnant by ourselves. Huh. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say anything except Be that I've been saying for a long time that uh, before they were even calling it that the war on women, that there was a concerted war on women, and that I, I really was hopeful and and but also extremely nervous that young women were not paying attention. Yeah. And yeah. And, and had and and it just doesn't occur to them that all the rights that we have only gained in the last hundred years could be very easily taken away from us, one by one. And, yep. you know, if, if they're, you know, putting any, you know, they're, they've already tried to insert various and sundry objects into us. Why shouldn't we have to talk to our bosses? You know, I, um, I was taking a tour of the Planned Parenthood facility here yesterday after, after the show. And um, it is, boy, when you see what the state laws here have mandated uh, for that organization and the clear, when you see what they've had to do to stay, keep their doors open, it's so clearly crazy harassment it's just so harassment. that you know so it's we flat out harassment so we open a door here is one of our rooms examining rooms and i says very lovely she said well it's very new we have had to totally redo every room on this floor the so ceiling they can do open heart surgery if yeah, they need to the ceiling the ceilings had to be redone the floors had to be a certain kind of flooring the um the drape that was hanging uh where a woman would change from her clothes into a gown um w all those had to be taken down and uh new ones installed i said what the heck do they care about the drapes? And she said, well, it was, she said, so much of what they they do has to do with, like, 
fire code. And so it had to be a drape that ended something like eight inches before the ceiling and was consisted then of some netting like I, I guess that would, like, deter flames for 10 seconds or something. I don't know. Every little thing, this had to be here. A separate room had to be there. All doors in the facility must be closed at all times, which, believe me, every time you go into a room there, there are people sitting in these stuffy, closed, <laughs> it's pure out-and-out out harassment. Yeah. And never mind. That the vast majority of what is happening in that building is women getting cancer screenings, women getting birth routine control, women's routine health. women's health care. And you have double doors for security purposes. If so if you get through the first door, you still got a, a serious security to get through. That th These people are working, you know, like behind bulletproof glass and, and all. It's unbelievable. And this On a bright note, the Missouri Court of Appeals threw out a Missouri legislator's and, and his wife's lawsuit, their pharmacist, uh, and they didn't want to, you know, have anything to do with yeah. birth control or, or, no, it was their insurance plan. They didn't want to cover birth control and insurance plan because it violated their First Amendment rights, and uh, thank God for our courts who... Um, you know, know their job, and they threw the suit out. It's getting, I mean, it's just constant. It's just constant, and it's, and it's in total bad faith. That's the, you know, when, when we have a group of lawmakers that are working in bad faith, and by bad faith I mean they are not trying to do anything positive, they are not trying to build anything, they are trying to uh, obstruct they are trying to win their own way, no matter what, and and it's it's bad faith. Well, it's 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 they they they're dishonest. They're di well. That's they're dishonest the about bad faith. okay. They're dishonest about their motivations and what it is they're really doing. So what they're trying to do is destroy these facilities, uh, at which a huge percentage of a poorer American women and men, folks. And men, men can get a vasectomy there. Men can get screenings there as well. As soon as, you know, and uh, that's where they get their care. That's often the only place they get their care. Well, and, and again, let me interrupt to underscore that. In a state like Missouri, which did not take the federal funding, as I know you didn't either. Mm. I, correct? Right, Pencil right, right. You didn't either? For, you know. The Medicaid, to get on Medicaid in Missouri... A single mother with two children would have to let, make less than $10 a day to qualify for Medicaid in Missouri. What? Yes. So and in other words... You... I got that piece of information from my latest Planned Parenthood letter beseeching me for funding. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They have classified poverty in terms of being eligible for Medicaid... As a, a a single mother with two children can't be making more than ten dollars a, a day. Well, oh, well, how does anyone qualify? You got it. Well, and what happens to all the people who are poor as church mice and they're making four times that, like forty dollars a day? Well, they go to the but, emergency rooms and they get free care, or they go to Planned Parenthood and they get care, or they go, you know, and and we all pay for it. But it doesn't come out of the state coffers. But we sure do pay for it, and it's a very inefficient system. We we well, could, if we would simply negotiate our fees and cover these people, it would be a whole lot cheaper. You know, the reality is, well... The reality is, is that, you know, to quote Sarah Palin, who is so upset that this is not a Christian nation anymore, you're damn tootin' it's not a Christian nation anymore. Uh, not, no. There's no charity to be there's found no, here. Move, move, no move along, move along. There's no Christianity around here. <laughs> move, move along, no charity here. Uh, so, 
Yeah. No, I think these guys, like your legislators and to a large extent ours, I mean, these. this is the meaning of penny wise, pound foolish, I guess. But I mean, there again, it's just disingenuousness. They pretend to be doing one thing when in fact they're doing another. Uh, Ray writes, I'm afraid in regard to uh, perhaps women having to discuss with their bosses um, their manner of birth control. I guess that has to do with whether or not their bosses would insure them if they don't approve of the way they're doing birth control. Uh, Ray writes, I'm afraid much of the new generation won't see discussing birth control with their bosses uh, as anything outrageous. You know, they discuss much worse on Twitter and Facebook with the world. Privacy has not been stolen as much as it's been thrown away. Well, that's that's true. But even so, where um, one of the basic rights of a workplace is to be free of uh, harassment and sexual harassment, having to sit down and talk about personal details of your sexual life with your boss seems to be inherently conflicting. Mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. And, but to underline Ray's point, it, um, you know, that there was an interesting article in the New York Times this weekend about how your, your college kid sending in his application might look very good on print, but when they access his Twitter, Twitter account, account and his right. Facebook page, they might not like what they see. Oh, and really? your AAA really good student who pretended like he did all that community service will have outed himself. Right, or the, you know, uh, perfect scores on his, uh, on his SATs and straight A's and all that kind of stuff. And then they can see from Twitter and Facebook that he's a class A jerk and they right. don't want him. Right. So well, there's a lot of throwing privacy away, but this is the first generation that's done it. And they're going to be the first generation to suffer the consequences and then uh, people get smarter. I mean, I people think. are already getting smarter. Right. I can tell you that the older part of that generation has long since stopped putting anything up on Facebook or, right. or Twitter. They don't right. do it. Right. Right. Okay. Well, when we come back, Susan, uh, we're changing. Ju- what does Julia Child have to do with anything? I don't know. Is that what you hear when I do that? Yeah, you're doing. You- you keep you keep <laughs> going into Julia Child and it's such a strange. I don't know. For you. I don't know why I do it. I don't know. Perhaps I need to make an appointment with a psychiatrist or something. I don't know what that is. When I do that, I think it's an effort to inject a change of tone. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Okay. Let's let's take a break and a change of top. There it goes again. And a change <laughs> And a change of topic when we uh, return. Stick around for more with Lynn Cullen Live after this. Packers. Vikings. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But when we live united, we make a real difference in the building blocks of life. Children succeed in school. Families gain financial stability. The health of our neighbors improves, and suddenly so do our communities. Real change won't happen without you. Live Live United. United. So give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. Sign up today at liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Just in time for the holidays, Little Shoes is your UGG headquarters. Little's has the largest selection of UGGs for men, women, and children to stay warm with shearling lined boots, shoes, and slippers. Don't forget to get your hats, gloves, scarves, and more. Bring the entire family to view one of the largest in-store UGG shops in the U.S. All available at Little Shoes, Pittsburgh's largest family shoe store. Forbes Avenue in Squirrel Hill or littleshoes.com. Download the brand new CP Haps app and find out what's going on in Pittsburgh. It's the free and fun app that puts the most popular events at your fingertips. Text events to 77948 to download now and to be registered to win tickets to Pittsburgh versus New York at Consol Energy Center on November 22nd. The CP Haps app, brought to you by Pittsburgh City Paper. Have a question or an opinion? Call Lynn Cullen at 412-316-3381 or email lynn at pghcitypaper.com. Now, more with Lynn Cullen Live. 
Okay, welcome back. And this is a this is one of those Q and A's uh, that uh, the New York Times Magazine has with uh, they pick somebody who I, is interesting and um, they do a Q and A with them. And the guy they did the Q and A with Susan, did you hear that it was a slight Valley Girl thing I just did? No, I, I didn't. Well, listen to what I said. I said so they take up da 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 and they do a Q and A with them. Yeah, that sure was. That was. Jesus. Okay. I told you to listen to for that. I'm okay, hearing sorry. it. Sorry. Sorry? I was at a meeting the other day, and the person leading the meeting, who's a woman older than I, was talking like that. And I'm thinking, did she always talk that way? Grandkids. Are you thinking, or what? Is, what's happening? Daughters. God. Because I know that yeah. I talk like that. And so I'm wondering if we want to do that. And on the other hand, what? And I started to like come unglued. Mm -hmm. This is how we will talk. It's, it's, you this know, is I, what bothers, and this is, and I, I admit this is a purely sexist thing, but it's when not I just hear women men talking like that, okay. and more and more you do hear yes, men talking you do. like that. That really drives me. Well, crazy. you know, if you listen to the talk shows, if you listen to like a, go on Fox or. Don't go on Fox! If you go on CNN or MSNBC and you hear these people talking, male and female, you hear that more and more and more. And these are intelligent people. These, in fact, are articulate people or they wouldn't be asked to go on those shows. But they do do that, mm, that, mm, that questioning kind of talk that by its very nature seems weak. That's why you don't like men doing it. Because it seems to invite constant uh, ag ag agreement and, and encouragement. Because when you end up like that, you're ex somebody wants to like say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So anyway, never mind. But I'm doing it. Anyway, so the, the guy they interviewed is a guy who was um, in charge of Trader Joe's. A guy named Doug. And this is weird. His last name is R-A-U-C-H. How would you pronounce that? R A U C H, Rausch, Rausch. Rausch. Would you say Rausch? We're all saying Rausch. Says here, the C H is silent. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, it's Rau. How are you Rau. have a silent C H? You asked me. That and then it's spelled wrong. It's R A U G H. <laughs> yeah. Well. So, okay. So we all know G H is at can, the end of the word is can, is, is, is silent. silent. It's only at the beginning of the word that it sounds like guh. Guh. So you tell me, though, come up with another word where there's a C-H that is silent. How dare he say you pronounce it row when he spells it roush? <laughs> and besides which, is a perfectly good spaghetti sauce that's row and it's R-A-O. R-A-O? Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, so he... Um, he, I, we've mentioned this before on the show, but he's got this new idea, and it's starting up, and he's opening a new kind of a store called Daily Table. And I think his first store is going to be in Boston, and it is going to sell foods that are past their sell-by date. Now you wouldn't uh, think Yeah, you wouldn't think this would be a great Yeah, you wouldn't think this would be a great business model. So yeah, so let me here's here's what he says about it. Uh, yes, we're selling uh, food that's past its sell by date and food that's cosmetically blemished. You know, food that you know, something that just doesn't look right and so regular grocery stores say oh pff. and he wants to sell that apple and he wants to sell that banana and he said um or a lot, lots of times, uh, fishermen catch fish that are not the fish they're targeting, and that those can just be tossed. He wants to, you know, if tuna fishermen get a bunch of other fish, I guess he, those fish can be had for not much. He says we're going to grab all of this stuff, we're going to bring it on site, we'll cook prepared meals with it, but also offer the milk and the eggs and the bread and the produce, and it'll be priced about the same as junk food, basically. This is his business model. Now, 
he says the junk food thing is interesting because his stuff ain't junk food. He, right. sa- he said, so it's, let's say you're on food stamps and you have, he says, the average family has about $3, $3 to spend on dinner. For that 3 bucks, you could get about 3,700 calories worth of snacks, sodas, crackers, whatever, or you can get 300 or 320 calories of fruits and vegetables. He says, so if you're poor, it's economically rational to feed your kids junk. Junk is a way of filling them up calorically, but produce and stuff is priced too too high. Now, I don't know if he's right or wrong, and he says you'll be able to get a good whole grain loaf of bread for about 50 cents at his store. Yeah, but is it moldy? It's not moldy. It's just past the sell-by date. And he says... Get, get this, I'm actually not doing anything different than what many high-end, high-priced national retailers do. Within their own stores, I'm sure he's talking about Whole Foods, within their stores, they will repackage meat or chicken or fish. No, we know they do that, That's yeah. been out on the display counter, and instead of throwing it out, they then cook it up. And that's what you're getting in their hot, uh, you know, bars where they're offering. They take the stuff that hasn't been selling and they cook it up for you. And this is uh, the Daily Table will be a nonprofit so that grocers will get a tax deduction for giving the store uh, their their stuff they're not that they would have thrown out, uh, just like they would get it for uh, giving it to a food bank. And um, he also says, to see a date on my food, he says, people throw stuff out all the time that is perfectly good. He said, I've been in the grocery industry since the early 70s, and most products, most by far, did not have a sell-by date on them back then. Back then, you smelled the milk, (laughs) right? You take it out of the refrigerator. I still do. And you smell the milk. If it smells bad, you throw it out. If it doesn't, you drink it. You do the same with the fish. You do the same with anything. Virtually all of the... And and in fact, he says that's not how you get foodborne illnesses. Virtually all of the known food-related deaths in America is caused by food that is in code. You know, like these, uh, what, the Whole Foods and, and others are having to call back in California a bunch of chicken wraps and stuff that were packaged and made. Um, those aren't ones with sell-by dates gone. So he's saying that it's all a bunch of crap. Right. Well, I mean, I can, you know something? We've got our mother's refrigerator to, to, to you know, prove it. Yeah, but though, sometime, I have to tell you. And what I don't get is... The sell-by date doesn't really tell you anything. No, because... How long is it going to sit in your... I mean, they that the food is theoretically good for a week after the sell-by date. Who says that? See, I never heard anyone say that. Yeah, I've heard that. I don't know, because I I had some salmon in my... And the the sell-by date was like five days gone, and I was afraid. I thought, "Mm, I don't don't know. Well, fresh salmon is different. Well, I don't know. So how, what is it? But I mean, if, for example, you have a yogurt and it's got a a sell-by date of a week ago, I would eat that yogurt. Yeah, me too. You know, I don't think that yogurt is bad. And I might even check it, you know, beyond that and do the smell test. You bet you. Or if something says best by. Best by, best if used. Yeah, then I will do that. No, if it's Best Buy, it doesn't mean that, that you can't you, eat that you it. can't eat it after. It's just what it tasted a little bit better before. Yeah, and it's also clearly a way of getting you to throw stuff out and go buy more. Well, I don't. I yes, mean, it is. They might use it that way, but those rules were imposed on them by the 
by the damn by government. By the government. By the government. Sticking its nose where it doesn't belong. Right. Yeah. I'm paid not a lot. Right. Nanny state. Oh, stop. Tom Sokolowski. Come on, Tom. You already used that joke, I think. I, get, I guess. <laughs> what, the, are we just being straight lines for people you today? No, I guess. He says, I guess that the silence of the CH in Mr. Rao's name is just like the silence of P in swimming. Oh, that is an old joke. That's, that's hanging on everybody's swimming pool. Uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right. He who swims in public pools is swimming in pee. Well, that's why chlorine's there. Right. Right? Of course. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know that that, I mean, this could be what he's doing here. And he's putting them in poorer neighborhoods. So uh, the... Um, the first store opening in Boston is in the Dor- Dorchester uh, neighborhood, and that's tar- people are saying, oh, yeah, so some rich guy comes in here, and he wants to sell poor people rich people's garbage. And he's, Well, it does have that, you know, he said that's that feeling why we, to it. But, yeah, but it's all going to be know, good. Fresh produce is fresh produce, and right. it is better than garbage. Garbage. And a lot, you know, honestly, a lot of food banks and, 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 and shelters have been begging for that food. I mean, that's the only downside that I see about it, that they're now going to sell to people that which they could have gotten perhaps for free from banks. But food banks are overwhelmed now with uh, overwhelmed. So maybe this, I don't know. Uh, caller, go Our ahead. food banks aren't over. Oh, yeah, yeah they're they overwhelmed are. with need, not with food. Right, exactly. Hello, caller. I have to redeem myself from that old joke. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah. No, I just wanted to say that Bobby Flay, you know, the famous TV cook, had a show on during the summer. And it was an hour-long show on Food Channel or something. And he showed how something like $35 million on food was lost every year because places, not even as grand as Whole Foods, but Giant Eagles and that sort of supermarket chains across the country throw out any peach or apple or tomato that just has a slight bruise on right, it. Right, right. And they showed this one dump <coughs> site, I can't remember where it was, just mountains and mountains of vegetables and fruits that were just being tossed because, you know, we like everything. Just like we, they spray oranges to make them orange rather than the natural sort of green orange that they are in nature. And that it's just simply because of this sort of hygienic, particularly of America, Right, And I remember when I lived in Italy years ago and going to the everyday open-air food market and I was looking at tomatoes and I got to know this one vegetable seller and I was looking and she said to me, oh, you Italian, oh, you American, do you like everything that looks like plastic? And she said, <coughs> here's this tomato and had little speckles on it. And she said, it's the best tasting. And sliced it, gave me a slice and damn it if she wasn't right. But it didn't well, look pretty, right. No, but it didn't look pretty. And, you know, we know that in all of these um, advertisements, they hire these stylists at great expense who pour, you know, plastic glycerin on everything and put bubbles in, uh, plastic bubbles in soups so all the fruit rises, the vegetables rise to the top to make it look more bounteous than it is. <laughs> so it's all about, uh, uh, you know, uh, stage play. What idiots we are. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 this is crazy. And yeah, the, we're, too, we're, we're too clean of a nation. It's America's not even clean. It's, it, it's something else. It's, it's, I, it's stupidity. Um, we're easily dazzled by the, um, you know, by, by the outsides and don't think about, you know, what's on the inside. In fact, some of those uh, veggies and fruits that are made to look so beautiful, yeah, as you say, they've got stuff on them to gl- make them glisten yeah. and clean. And they're tasteless. And yeah, Sorry. and they're tasteless. And why do you want something enhanced in that phony way? I mean, we'll find out that the well, well it's just like you know, there's a whole other discussion, but the parabola, <laughs> that, and Botox. Yeah, I mean the same sort of thing. A wrinkled dot, not an old brown thing. On that, I will say goodbye, ladies. Goodbye, Thomas. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, and you're here for the Botox, but just what, you know, when I was thinking about the masses of fruits and vegetables thrown out, I mean, in my own refrigerator, my own. there's always stuff that I might not want to eat, but, you know, since somebody forced me to get a juicer, if the, anything that you don't, that you don't want to, you just throw that in the juicer and you extract all of the good stuff from it, vegetables, you know, fruits, you put them together, and I got to tell you, it's delicious. And, and, and full of vitamins. So even when you're, you know, even if you didn't well, want it, you know, even if it was unsightly, it still has benefit in yes. food. And, and, and we really have to teach people how to do these things. But I want to say that you don't even need the juicer because I have found that if you simply leave those vegetables in the crisper in your refrigerator long enough, they turn they into... They turn to juice. Right. <laughs> and you and, can just pour it out of the bottom of your yeah, drawer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's Particularly like... Particularly cucumbers. Yeah. So there they are, and there, it's like, it's it's now liquid. <laughs> Look at those zucchinis. It, they've turned into zucchinis. You're supposed to do that a little bit sooner. Oh. Well, because it seems like nature just runs its course, and there it is. Yeah. But I do, I mean, I, I do worry that, that, you know, that I think that's a fine scheme that gentleman has, but I think a lot of that food was finding its way to food banks. And I'd rather, you know, if, if we are going to say that a certain segment of the population eats lesser food, then I'd rather they get that lesser f- food, you know, for nothing, for free. So just because it's a 50 cent uh, loaf of uh, good whole grain bread, why not? Have it be yeah, I don't. Nothing. I mean, I don't see. I don't see that much altruism in this in this guy's stance. I'd rather have him just getting that food to a bank. Oh no, he's fully. It's a nonprofit, though. It's a nonprofit. Yeah, he so said. Are, so are a lot of elderly homes. Well, you know, so is UPMC. The yeah, uh, who's it doesn't mean that he's not looking to take a salary. Yeah, that's true. Well, all right. Just telling you that that's what's uh, <clears throat> that's what's happening. So, Susan. Yes. Oh, look at what time it is. Yes, indeedy. Thank you very much. Okay. You too. Have a good day. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye. And uh, you guys, uh, t- toodaloo. Tomorrow, uh, we'll we'll do some. Con- it's it's it, it, tomorrow's a work in progress, but I'm going to have some guests for you. I promise. Just working on it. The logistics have been uh, difficult, but uh, I will correct that momentarily. Tomorrow's good show. Thursday, Tom Sokolowski. Friday, Chris Potter. And uh, now, goodbye. Lynn Coven Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Coven Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.